It's time for the ESPN Week 9 College Football Pick'em. And on this show, we pick against the spread for the ESPN College Pick'em Contest. Let's see what we got this week. Let's go on and jump in. All right, all right. I'm your host, Gary Seegers. Of course, this is Winning Cures Everything. You can get me on all the socials at GaryWCE. I am most prevalent on X, so I would suggest you check over there if you uh, if you want to check me out. Uh, let me go on and tell you. Subscribe to the video. Like the video. Or subscribe to the channel. Like the video. I think that's the easiest way to put that. However you want to do it. Uh, the Bet U.S. College Football Show. Every Tuesday and Wednesday, 1 p.m. Eastern Time. Myself, Parker Fleming, Kyle Hunter... Uh, we break down some of the biggest games, some of the most interesting games, and really uh, the games where we find value. So we hope that you will subscribe over there. There's a link in the description for that. Along with that, bettingcfb.com is where you can subscribe to get my uh, my sheets, all these things that you're going to see on the show today. So let's not waste a bunch of time. We go through these fairly quickly, uh, but I show you the ESPN line. I show you the stats and projections and whatnot. And then we go from there. So let's go on and dive in. We'll start off with, uh, well, as you can see, I am 40 and 30 on the year. Apparently, I missed week two. I don't know how that was possible. Uh, but I am ranked 16,994. We are doing better than 82.5% of the field. We're hoping to only get better as we go along. So 40 and 30 so far in the picks. Uh, and our first game on the day is going to take us to, of course, Make sure I write our times down here. We are going to Washington at Indiana. So we're going to Bloomington, Indiana, a six and a half point favorite. 84% of the public is on Indiana. They are absolutely rolling right now. They have covered in six straight ball games. And Kurt Signetti and Bunch, or Sig Vicious, as I called him earlier today, uh, he is he's doing fantastic things. Fantastic things there. So let's go on and pull up the web stats. And we'll see what we got. Um, da, 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 da. Okay. So, hopefully you can see all of that. I think I cut off some of it on the side, but that's fine. I've got Indiana favor by 18. Uh, over the past four weeks, just uh, stats based on the last four weeks, what the spread would be based on stats over just four weeks. I've got Indiana by 18 and a half. It's a lot of points. It's also got it going over, 58 0.51, and the overs have certainly hit in these Indiana games because they are scoring a ridiculous number of points. Uh, they have got the at their their point differential through seven games of the season is comparable to teams that have made the playoff in the past, and that's in the four team field. Teams that have won the national championship. I mean, we're talking crazy stuff. But that was with Curtis Rourke at quarterback, the Maple Missile, if you will. You look at some of these numbers. Washington's numbers are good on their face. Right, number nine in PPA margin, number eleven in uh, offensive PPA per drive, number eleven in defensive PPA per drive allowed. And when you start to look at it, they're not very good at defending the rush. Uh, they're number one thirteen in stuff rate, number one hundred six in offensive line yards. Uh, their average field position is number seventy four. They give up uh, three point six six points per scoring opportunity. That is a drive that gets inside the opponent forty yard line. And along with that. Uh, you, you see that Indiana is number four in points per scoring opportunity on offense. You go to the other side, and Indiana, they don't allow a lot of scoring opportunities per game. They're number two, only allowing four drives per game to get inside their 40-yard line. Uh, but they're number 72, so they give up 3.71 points per scoring opportunity. Washington is not good at that either. Even when they do get into scoring range, which they don't do all that often, they're number 80 in that metric here. Uh, they are number 110 in points per scoring opportunity, so they're not very good at finishing drives. Uh, in overall efficiency, my five factors plus talent rank has got uh, Indiana number 12. It's got Washington number 52. You see penalties per game. That leans Indiana's way. Indiana number 49 in penalties per game. Uh, Washington number 99. Turnover margin, Indiana number 13. Washington number 63. There's a lot of things on the edges, and we talked on the Bet U.S. show today, about the fact that Washington is number 133 in SPS or SP plus uh, special teams rating. Indiana's number 12. There's little things in these games that are worth points. I think this is one of them. I'm going to side with the public on this. Uh, I like Indiana a lot 
I think Indiana's fantastic. We will go on and take the Hoosiers there, and that will move us over to uh, our next game. Next up, the Ohio State Buckeyes are hosting the Nebraska Cornhuskers. Ohio State, a 25-and-a-half point favorite at ESPN. And 54% of the public is on these guys. So let's go ahead and pull up the stats. And I didn't switch it. There we go. All right, uh, Ohio State, I've got them favored by 26. So I'm pretty close to the number. Over the past four weeks, it's got Ohio State minus 17.9. So about 18 points, 31 to 13 kind of ball game. Um, now I've got it on here, 42 uh, and a half to 16 and a half. So let's say 43, 17, something like that. But, uh, but I think that this one is probably going to go closer to, I don't think Nebraska gets blown out the way they did last week. I think that was an avalanche Ohio state. They've got Penn state coming up. I just, I don't think that they are going to be too, too crazy. This thing opened at 23 and a half. Uh, it quickly got out to 25 and a half, and it might be even further along than that. Now, um, when you look at some of these stats, you know, Nebraska's number 30 in PPA margin. Their offense is not great. They're number 49 in offensive PPA per drive. That's predicted points added. Uh, they're number 20 on defense. Uh, they did not do well against Indiana. That doesn't necessarily mean that they won't do well here. I get the feeling, and if you look at some of these little things like, uh, Penalties per game, et cetera, that certainly skews Ohio State's way. Turnover margin is pretty equal. Uh, Nebraska is not very good at finishing inside the red zone. They're number 126 in offensive red zone uh, conversion percentage. But even still, 25 and a half points is a lot of points to cover. So uh, I think that Nebraska is catching Ohio State. One, Nebraska doesn't want to get embarrassed again. Number two, Ohio State might be looking at bigger games ahead. Uh, let's make this easy. We'll pick Nebraska on that. And that takes us to game number three on this. And Oklahoma heads to Ole Miss. This one uh, is an early matchup, of course, on uh, ESPN, I believe it is, if I'm not mistaken. I think that's what those are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ohio State's on Fox. Oklahoma Ole Miss on ESPN. When's the last time you saw Oklahoma as a 20-and-a-half point underdog? I mean, it, <laughs> these numbers are bananas. Uh that's just a that's a wild number. The offensive line looks like a mess. Jackson Arnold is going to be starting this week. Uh, you've got fifty percent of the people on Oklahoma, fifty percent on Ole Miss, and let's go on and check out what the numbers say. I've got Ole Miss by nineteen and a half. That is what it opened. It, it it's out to twenty one in a couple of spots. I mean, it's a lot of lot of Ole Miss love this week. Ole Miss coming off a bye. Oklahoma just got thrashed at home last week. Uh, I don't know what's going on with these Oklahoma last four weeks numbers. Um, they haven't been, like, terrible. Their defense is pretty good. Uh, you see number 11 in defensive success rate. Well, Ole Miss is number one in that. Uh, Ole Miss is number eight in offensive success rate. Oklahoma is number 130 in offensive success rate. Let's look at this Oklahoma offense. You see all that red. Number 122 in predicted points added per pass. Number 129 in predicted points added per rush. Uh, they are number 129 in rushing success rate. They are number 128 in offensive line yards. Number 116 in stuff rate allowed. Uh, they are behind the chains constantly because standard down PPA is number 130. Standard down success rate is number 132. They cannot get ahead of the chains. It's a complete debacle. And the biggest thing, I guess, for their passing game, uh, they're number 122 in havoc rate allowed. Ole Miss's defense is number one. Number one in Havoc rate. The defensive line for Ole Miss is going to want to feast on this, uh, especially after the way that they lost the LSU game. They could not get a sack on Garrett Nussmeyer. They're going to try and eat Jackson Arnold alive here. And my number is 19 and a half. I kind of think that Ole Miss just lays the wood here. Um, so we'll we'll go ahead and roll with that. Ole Miss minus the 20 and a half. I think it could get ugly. Um, and I, I don't think you're going to get any bounce from bringing in Joe John Finley, the tight ends coach uh, and the co-coordinator, to be the uh, play caller now. I don't think he was going to do any better than Seth Luttrell. That offensive line is a disaster. So that's the way it goes. Uh, that moves us on to game number four here. And we've got the Navy midshipmen uh, facing off against Notre Dame. This one's at MetLife Stadium in East Rutherford, New Jersey. 
and it's an early game. A lot of people love Navy. A lot of people love Navy, and I can understand it. They have covered every game. They've gone over in every game. Uh, it is, I mean, it's pretty wild. But this is a Notre Dame team that plays them every year. Do they kind of know? Like, remember, Navy brought in this offensive coordinator from Mercer that uh, they kind of changed up the offense. And, you know, well, we're going to pull up the stats here. He uh, he has certainly done good things with Navy's offense. They're number five in offensive PPA per drive. Now, these are raw numbers, obviously. Um, but gracious, uh, the, the points are not supposed to be raw numbers. The points are supposed to be, you know, weighted. But, man... Uh, Number three in offensive success rate. Now, Navy's defense is number 58 in that. Notre Dame, pretty good. Number 15 in defensive success rate. Number 58 in offensive success rate. So I think you look at this, and I feel like Notre Dame is going to be able to run the ball. They are number nine in PPA per rush. Number two in rushing explosiveness. Navy is number 107 in PPA allowed per rush. They are number 61 in rushing explosiveness allowed. If you start looking at offensive line yards and stuff rate and all that kind of stuff, Navy is just not great at that. And this happens to be what Notre Dame does the most. They run the ball 53% of the time. Uh, it's really middle of the pack. They're number 47 in the country as far as their rush rate. Uh, they're not great at throwing it. Navy is pretty good at defending passes. Now, part of that has to do with the fact that Navy is consistently ahead. If they can get in a good game state here, then maybe. Um, but I kind of I kind of get the feeling that Notre Dame might blow these guys out. Because if you look at the strength of schedule, number 132, Navy has played nobody. They are they've played nobody that's very good. So Notre Dame's defense number one in PPA allowed per pass. Uh, they are number 41 in PPA allowed per rush, so Navy will probably be able to run, but again, Navy has not run against anybody like this. This Notre Dame defensive line, this Notre Dame front seven is pretty good. They're number 78 in rush success rate allowed, but again, a lot of this, now this is garbage time excluded, but I'm going against my numbers here. Uh, my numbers certainly like the over, so I like the over, but, and, and pace of play kind of plays into that because you know, you're looking at number 126 in plays per game, number 93 in plays per game. So there's not going to be a ton of plays in the ball game. The difference is that these two teams are really, really efficient on offense. Uh, so they will be able to score. But I, I get the feeling that Notre Dame might blow these guys out. And so, and I hate to say that because I, I'll be pulling for the troops. Um, but if this thing got to 14, I'd, I'd probably bet the other direction. As it sits right now, too many people on Navy. Uh, I will take Notre Dame in that spot. Uh, right quick. Let me tell you right quick about how to save some money. I know you guys like to save money, right? Ticketsmarter.com. That is the spot. That is the way it goes. Uh, Ticketsmarter.com is a third-party ticketing vendor and I highly recommend them uh, because you can save money with them every single time you buy tickets, whether it's to concerts, whether it's to some of the biggest games every single week, whether it is to uh, any number of things, right? Uh, you want to go to some of these huge, huge games, Alabama-Auburn coming up later in the year. You got LSU-Texas A&M this weekend, Texas-Texas A&M. I mean, you can't get into that thing for less than like a grand right now. Uh, if you're going to go anyway, why not save some money doing it? Go to Ticketsmarter.com, put in the promo codes WCE10 or WCE20, that's WCE one zero or two zero. Uh, that is going to get you either ten bucks off an order of hundred dollars or more, or twenty bucks off an order of three hundred dollars or more. So do yourself a favor, WCE twenty, or you can use WCE ten, and it's going to save you money every time. It's not a one time thing. It's not a it's not a sign up bonus or whatever. It's just every time you buy tickets, you can save money. Do yourself that favor. Think smarter with Ticket Smarter and the Ticket Smarter mobile app. Uh, also, right quick, if you like these sheets that I'm doing, I put them out every single week on bettingcfb.com. Uh, I put out a lot of other stat projections, different things that you might like. Uh, I tell you when I make bets, and uh, and I'll tell you what number I got, and I try and tell you where I got it and all that kind of stuff. So, so yeah, it's a fun little community over there. Sometimes I do some bonus audio and whatnot, but bettingcfb.com is where you would get that. All right, we move back into it. 
Oh, yes. And we move on to game number five here. And the Illinois Fighting Illini are headed to Eugene, Oregon to take on the Ducks. And Oregon is now number one in the country. Illinois, number 20, as you see on the screen. And we've got a line here of Oregon minus 21 and a half on this. Illinois just beat Michigan last week. Uh, maybe gives a little more credence to uh, to what the Illini have done thus far on the season. And let's look at the number. Uh, I have got Oregon by 20.86. Now, over the past four weeks, I've got Oregon minus 19.31. Um, this is one of those where, had, who has Illinois actually played, right? Like, who who have they played that can actually put up points? And I don't know the answer to that. Penn State, certainly, but they held them to 21 points. Um, I mean, you, you start looking at this number. They played Purdue. They played Michigan. And now they're playing at Oregon. Uh, who did they play before that? I mean, just a, a mess. Eastern Illinois, Kansas, Central Michigan, at Nebraska, at Penn State. Yeah, I just... I don't necessarily trust uh, Illinois' strength of schedule as far as the offensive teams that they have faced. But, I mean, you look at their their defense. Number 109 in PPA allowed per rush. Uh, that's not good. They're number 102 in passing success rate allowed, number 102 in passing explosiveness allowed. That's not good. Uh, and on the other side, their offense is pretty good. Now, they did they did run the ball really, really well against Michigan last week, ran for 187 yards on 38 carries. But they uh, – overall, this Illinois team is is good. They are good. Are they as good as what Oregon can do to them? Uh, Oregon, number 24 in PPA per pass, number 32 in PPA per rush. They're number nine in offensive success rate. Um, even still, the the 21 and a hook, I kind of like the hook going the other way. Um, it just it feels like a ton of points, and, and a lot of people feel the exact same way. 69% of the people are on um, their own Illinois. And I guess I can't really blame them, but man, gosh, I hate when that many people are on one side. Uh, Oregon could certainly run this thing up if they wanted to. Even with it, I will believe in Brett Bielema. And so let's take Illinois plus 21 and a half. Uh, that moves us on to game number six here. And we have got the Missouri Tigers coming in at uh, six and one, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, let's see. Yes, six and one going to Alabama. Alabama's five and two. Did not look very good last week against Tennessee. But man, um, so right now Alabama a thirteen and a half point favorite. Uh, that thing had jumped up to fourteen in a couple of different places. You know, is what it is. Uh, let's look at the numbers here. Uh, this one's going to be in Tuscaloosa. It's going to be wild. Uh, Alabama fans are mad. Alabama saying all the right stuff. They are trying to. Um, I don't know what the they're, they're trying to get back to the basics, you know, showing up on time for meetings. I read that today. Uh, they want to make sure they do that. I, I think when you look at what Kalen DeBoer has going on, uh, he doesn't know the guys that he can get on to and the guys that he can't because he's a brand-new coach. Um, also, you are dealing with a ton of injuries. Keon Sab is now out. I think there's something wrong with Milrow. He doesn't look right. Um, so you're dealing with a bunch of injuries as well. But Missouri is not great right not by any stretch of the imagination so let's let's look at these numbers i've got alabama by 12.53 if you just go based on the stats from the past four weeks i've got missouri favored in the game even on the road that's with home field advantage tossed in i mean it's the numbers have been bad for alabama uh defense is letting guys just run wide open if you allow luther burden to run wide open in the secondary brady cook is not going to miss him like it just bottom line that is that's not going to happen but you got a bunch of dudes that are dinged up, and you got all kind of stuff going on here. So uh, my number on it is, I mean, I'm pretty close to what the number has, but, man, uh, I know 52% of the people are on Missouri. Uh, Missouri, number 40 in PPA margin. They're number 24 in defensive PPA uh, allowed per drive. Alabama is number 48 in offensive PPA allowed per drive, uh, but they're number 28 in defensive PPA allowed per drive, and I don't even know how that's possible. 
Like I guess like they've played some bad offenses, but man, uh, it's pretty rough. Alabama trying to run the ball. They have no running game outside of Jalen Milrow. And this offensive line just can't seem to get a push. They're number 116 in offensive line yards. They're number 123 in stuff rate allowed. It's not good. It is just not good. And if you can't get a run game uh, going against Missouri, I mean, Missouri is number 35 in interceptions per pass attempt. Alabama is number 85 in that spot. Uh, You start looking at things like third down, third down conversion percentage. Missouri's defense is number nine. Alabama is number 51. Um, One stat that I don't have on here, Alabama averages like third and seven. I think Josh Pate put something out about this, uh, where Bama in the past four games has had 53 third downs and like 45 of them were third and seven or longer. They've only converted five of them. Um, I mean, it's just, it's not great uh, by any stretch. Uh, Gosh, I thought I had that thing out. Maybe I didn't. Nope. Oh, there we go. Okay, this is great radio. Uh, (laughs) I know you guys appreciate this. Here we go. Alabama's offense has had 53 third down attempts this season. 33 of those have been third and seven. They've only converted five of the 33, and Missouri has a top 10 third down defense. Um, So now there's, there's all of these things that you put in here. But you can also put in that Alabama has won their last five matchups against Missouri and all of them by 13-plus points. This is not those Alabama teams. So let's go back over here. Let's take Missouri. And that will be that. Game number seven takes us to Nashville. And that is where the Vanderbilt Commodores will be uh, playing against the Texas Longhorns, who are coming off of a big loss. Vanderbilt is absolutely rolling right now. Um, this was a pretty easy handicap for me. Uh, let's, let's go ahead and look at the stats. I've got Texas by 19, uh, based on stats from the last four weeks. <laughs> that's, that's why you don't use these to like fully handicap a game. You just use it to get an idea of how well these teams are playing. It would have Vanderbilt favored by almost 10 points. Like, that's absurd. Now, it's just based on stats. It's not based on power rating or anything else. It's just the stats that you're putting up. Okay? Think about it. Texas didn't look very good against Mississippi State. Then they had a bye week, and they played Oklahoma. They didn't look great against Oklahoma. They didn't look great against Georgia, obviously. Vanderbilt, I mean, they beat Alabama. They beat Kentucky. They beat Ball State. They are... Vanderbilt is is looking good right now. So that is why Vandy would be favored there. Um, but I don't need the numbers to tell me something that I already know, right? So Texas, number six in PPA margin. Uh, their current strength of schedule is number 51. Vandy's strength of schedule is number 31 here. And, uh, you know, you start to look at some of these other things, the offense going against that defense. Uh, there's not a number that would tell you that Vanderbilt should cover this this game. Vandy's defense, not great against the pass. Number 94, or sorry, 84 in PPA allowed per pass. Number 110 in passing success allowed. They're number 76 in PPA allowed per rush. da 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 da, da. But this is an easy one for me. Um, actually, very easy. Let's go on and switch it back over. Vandy, plus 18 and a half. Because you don't bet against Diego Pavia as a double-digit dog. They're at home. They're feeling frisky. I like Vanderbilt in this spot. I think that's a good. I think that's a good time. You guys tell me. Put it in the comments. What do you think? All right, right quick. Let me tell you about Ghost Sleeves. Ghostsleeves.com/wce. You're going to get 15 percent off of the best kinesiology compression sleeves on the market. It's for your knees. It's for your elbows. Uh, they've got this kind of gel like cream stuff that actually helps out quite a bit. If you're like me. You're 41 years old. You got a six year old that is really into wrestling and he wants to be Cody Rhodes or Seth Rollins or whatever. And you're catching elbows in the face and you're having to get down on the floor all the time and whatnot. You, you, when you're 41, you're just not built for that. Okay. Uh, whether you're playing different sports, pickleball, golf, whatever, your knees, your joints hurting, this thing will help. Ghostsleeves.com slash WCE. It gets you 15% off. Uh, go and check it out. Check out all the testimonials, all the reviews. 
They are absolutely fantastic, and they are the best on the market. Ghostsleeves.com slash WCE. Along with that, of course, don't forget the BetUS College Football Show every Tuesday and Wednesday, 1 p.m. Eastern time. There's a link in the description, so make sure you are subscribed over there. And, of course, Three Dog Thursday right here on the Winning Cures Everything YouTube page. Uh, it won't be on the podcast. It has its own podcast feed. Uh, but TJ Reeves and myself or other people, we'll see about this week. Uh, <laughs> mostly it's been me, but Jason Powers has been in. A couple other people have been in. Uh, but, yeah, TJ and I have a good time doing that. Three Dog Thursday is always a lot of fun with myself and TJ. So check out Three Dog Thursday on Thursday afternoons. All right, that takes us back into the pick em here, and we're going to move on to game number eight. Uh, and, of course, don't forget, like the video, subscribe to the channel, subscribe to the podcast. There's different stuff on the podcast uh, than just what you get here, so simple enough. All right, Florida State goes to Miami. And who, boy... Uh, Miami favored by 21 and a half. And guys, Florida State is one and six. They are hapless. They make all the mistakes in the world. But so let's pull up the stats here. Cam Ward has just been lighting people up. Miami is number seven in PPA margin. They're number four in offensive PPA per drive. Uh, Florida State, just every number is bad. Number 121 in PPA margin. Number 125 in offensive PPA per drive. Number 119 in defensive per drive. Uh, they're number 129 in offensive success rate. On defense, they're number 57 in defensive success rate, so maybe that's something. Um, but even though they are not allowing a, a huge success rate, uh, they're still allowing teams to score. Uh, they are number 40 in points per scoring opportunity. They're number 63 in scoring opportunities per game, but they're number 93 in average field position on defense. On the other side, now obviously I don't have to say anything about Miami's offense. You guys should know by now if you follow me. You know that I am in love with Shannon Dawson's offense. He uh, he does amazing things. But on the other side, I'm not in love with Mike Norvell's offense this year. They are just about as dreadful as you can get. Uh, points per play margin. Florida State is number 132 in offensive points per play. Now, they are number 48 in defensive points allowed per play, but... Good gracious. Uh, number 127 in turnover margin. They're number 109 in giveaways per game. They don't make the other team turn the ball over. They're one, uh, number 123, I think that says, in, um, where was it? No, 133 in takeaways per game. They cannot generate turnovers. It, there's just all kind of problems here. Miami doesn't really turn the ball over, and they're really good at forcing turnovers. I mean, my number on this is Miami minus 30. Now, based on the last four weeks of data, it's Miami minus 14, but Miami got that bye week at the right time. I don't think Florida State's offense is going to be able to keep up here. I know 21 and a half has got the hook. I don't think I care. I think Miami wants to absolutely blow the doors off this team. They don't like Florida State, so I can understand it. Give me Miami minus 21 and a half. It's a huge number. But by God, I mean, I get it. I get it. Game number nine moves us to the Sunflower Showdown. And Kansas visits Kansas State. So we're going to the Little Apple for this one. Uh, Kansas State favored by nine and a half here. And yeah, I, I get it. Uh, it's a lot of points. It's a whole lot of points. Um, but it makes sense when you look at the stats because I've got Kansas State favored by 16.32. I've got Kansas State favored by 11 and a half based on the last four weeks. Uh, this thing was at 10 and a half. It's actually gone down because some people like Kansas this week for some reason. Um, you look at what this Kansas offense has been able to do. What they are best at is running the football. That happens to be the strength of this Kansas State defense. Uh, Kansas is number six in PPA per rush on offense. Kansas's defense or Kansas State's defense is number five in PPA allowed per rush. So they don't let you do a whole lot. As far as rushing success rate goes, Kansas State, number seven. Kansas's offense is number 25. Uh, rushing explosiveness is like the biggest advantage. Kansas is number 18. Kansas State, number 73. They've allowed some explosives. I, I mean, points per scoring opportunity. Uh, Kansas is number one. The problem is that they don't get there very often. They're number 94 in scoring opportunities per game. Uh, but you look on the other side, Kansas cannot stop the run. And what do you think Kansas State does? Kansas State, number seven in PPA per rush. Kansas uh, Kansas's defense is number 110 in PPA allowed per rush. 
it is a complete and total debacle. I mean, it's just, it's not good. So you got number 10 in PPA margin against number 39 in PPA margin, and you've also got, uh, you know, a team that's number 83 in giveaways per game. Now, Kansas State, not great at turning the ball over. They don't they don't get a lot of takeaways. They're number 70 in that spot. Um, I mean, as far as, like, five factors plus talent, this is Kansas State all day. They're number 21 to Kansas, number 68. So many favorites. Uh, The fact that this one is at home certainly plays into Kansas State. Um, They lost the game last year. It was the first time in a while. Chris Kleiman knows how to beat this team. So let's go on and uh, and get back to this. 86% of the people are on Kansas State. I think they're probably right. So many favorites. Uh, Give me Kansas State minus the nine and a half. Just disgusting. Mm. All right, and the last game of the day, SMU, an 11.5-point favorite on the road at Duke, and Duke is 6-1. and one. Like Anybody that had that under 5.5, I mean, just a complete and total debacle. Uh, nobody expected this out of Manny Diaz's team in their first year, especially with what they lost in the portal. Uh, just a complete overhaul, and their numbers, I mean, well, here, let's just look at the stats. Their numbers are not good. Like the number 49 in PBA margin, it's because their defense has been absolutely lights out. Uh, and they're, they've been able to get turnovers. They're number 20 in takeaways per game. Uh, SMU, that does happen to be a weakness of theirs, and they're number 67 in giveaways per game. Um, this defense for Duke is, I mean, number three in PPA allowed per pass. Where they can be got is with the run. Uh, SMU is just kind of a hodgepodge, right? Number 42 in offensive PPA per drive. Um just not, it's not what you would expect from a Rhett Lashley team. Uh, Duke is built the way that you would think a Manny Diaz team is built, right? They are number 117 on offense, but number four on defense as far as predicted points added per drive. Uh, their success rate on offense, number 114. I, I like Scott Simons, the uh, defensive coordinator at SMU. I, I mean, he's done an absolute, like, bang up job with this defense. I've got SMU by 8.27 over the last four weeks. I've got Duke by 6.69. I mean, what? Oh. I came in, I, I wanted to take SMU, but the, uh, they have just, everybody knows that Duke's offense is terrible. They rely on turnovers. They rely on their defense a lot. If you get behind, you get in a negative game state, then you're in trouble. The problem is they haven't gotten behind. So, if you go against your numbers, then you go with SMU. But I don't feel great about that. I mean, especially on the road. Let's see what uh all right, let's see what it looks like with SMU and their schedule. Uh are they overlooking this game at all? They played at Stanford last week. Now they gotta come cross country, play at Duke, they play Pitt at home next week. Now, as far as the Blue Devils, what do we got there? Uh, the Blue Devils have got, they played FSU, big win last week. They play SMU this week at home. Then they play at Miami next week. Maybe a bit of a look ahead for the Blue Devils. Um, they are right in this ACC race, but they've got at Miami, at NC State, Virginia Tech, and Wake Forest left. Okay. I'm going to go, I'm, I'm going against the number, uh, yeah, I'm going against the number. All right, let's pull it back over to that. Let's do SMU minus 11.5. 45% of people have picked SMU here. My number certainly says Duke, but man, feels like that was a pretty emotional win last week. Then you got Miami coming up, and that is a huge, huge spot because you know Manny Diaz wants to put it to him. I don't think he really cares about the SMU game. Give me SMU. Give me SMU. All right, so our tiebreaker here says how many total points will be scored in Washington versus Indiana? Well, let's flip back over to the sheets. Let's click over here. I've got 58 and a half. Uh, So let's say, I mean, that's over the 51 and a half. Uh, Let's go 59 points. Why not? Why not? Let's go back over here, and we'll put in our 59. And our picks are now auto-saved, as you can see right there. Not too shabby not too shabby okay all right let's recap this thing 
And we'll go through all the different picks that we've made. We like Indiana minus six and a half. Eighty-four percent of people are on that. Let's go Nebraska plus twenty-five and a half. Forty-six percent are on that. Uh, Ole Miss minus twenty and a half. We got fifty percent on that. Uh, Notre Dame minus thirteen and a half. Twenty-five uh, percent have taken that one. Uh, Illinois plus twenty-one and a half. We've got sixty-nine percent of the public on that. Uh, Missouri plus thirteen and a half. Fifty-two percent have taken that one. Vandy. Plus 18 and a half. Going to take uh, 46% have taken that one. Uh, we like Miami, 77%. I mean, this is so square. It's so ridiculous. It's uh, huge numbers, too. Uh, but God, Florida State is terrible. All right, anyway, Miami minus 21 and a half. Uh, 77% of the public's on that one. Kansas State minus 9 and a half. 86% are on that one. And SMU minus 11 and a half. 45% of the public is on that. And 59 points in Washington and Indiana. Okay, that is going to wrap things up. You guys are fantastic. I appreciate you being here every single week. Uh, we have a good time with this. Hopefully you do as well. I love breaking down these games, talking about my uh, my thought process behind these. So you guys, let me know in the comments what you think as well. Don't forget, bettingcfb.com, the BetUS College Football Show every Tuesday and Wednesday, 1 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, of course, with that, Three Dog Thursday, Ticket Smarter, Ghost Leaves. You guys know the drill. All right. Let's get out of here. Take care of yourself. Take care of each other. God bless college football and hopefully all of your tickets cash this week. Thanks for listening to Winning Cures Everything. Make sure and follow me on Twitter at GaryWCE. If you want to toss in a question, you can email me Gary at winningcureseverything.com. Make sure and hit that subscribe button. And we'll see you next time.